Tonight on MTN, budget shortfalls put the Miles City Police Department behind on cases. I will probably run out of funding to put fuel in the cars by mid to late spring. With officers laid off and failing equipment, the chief puts into context the trouble they're facing. Plus, dealing with an avalanche of political ads, some even starring Q2's anchors. Um, having ads all the time is just not necessary. With election day near, we look at the truth behind these commercials and the stories they can tell. And behind the bronze. That's uh, definitely a lot of steps and a, a lot of little niche things that you'd never even think about. A young woman opens up a new foundry in a small Wyoming town, paying homage to an old one. The MTN 10 o'clock news starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Russ Riesinger. We begin tonight in Miles City, where the police department was recently asked by city leaders to let go of three positions, leaving the agency scrambling to figure out how to maintain essential services in a city of just over 8,000 people. As our Andrea Lutz found out, funding is a constant puzzle for police chief Doug Columbic who says he's going to run out of money to put gas in his patrol cars by early spring. It's another day on shift. This one has 182,000. For Miles City Police Sergeant Mike Murphy. So if we go to start it and it just grinds it, just bear with me. Grinding to a start is his 07 Crown Vic, a patrol car you don't see often these days. Yep. When did police departments start phasing these out, would you say? <laughs> Probably uh 10 years ago but this is what the police department budget allows we got guys running crown vix because we have no choice it's going to be tough i will probably run out of funding to put fuel in the cars by mid to late spring is what i'm looking at police chief doug yeah. columbic says his agency is operating in critical financial constraints the the funding for this police department has uh, decreased for several years where it's really difficult to make ends meet just like a, a family trying to survive. The city is facing a budget crisis. First, it was a hiring freeze at the fire department. Now police officers laid off. Now we're an agency that's supposed to be fully staffed at 17 and we got cut down to 14 due to budget cuts, uh, lack of funding. At a time when he says felony caseloads have only increased, Detective Chris Fetty is seeing it firsthand. It's a conflict for me because I want to uh, turn over every stone. I want to find every shred of evidence and detail to a case. I don't always get that opportunity because I've got six more new cases coming in. Officers say they want to do more, but since letting an officer go, it's been hard. So morale's been, been a big challenge around here. The department even has new cars, but they just sit there because there's no funding to equip them. I can tell you this, we can't afford to be cut anymore because it's a safety concern, not just for the public, but for the officers as but, well. Uh, it can also Back on patrol, Sergeant Murphy that says that when the public calls for help, they'll really respond. Uh, you know, one car has a uh, stress ball shoved between the window and the dash to keep the dash from rattling. Even if it's not in style. Is that you're one of the only departments in Montana that still has these? Yeah, it's usually a conversation piece. In Miles City, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Chief Columbic says looking for grants and donations only gets so far. He says they need a revenue solution. Now, as we've reported before, Miles City Mayor Dwayne Andrews says the city's budget crisis is the result of little professional oversight on department budgets over the years, cost of living raises for union members, and overestimated city expenditures. Well, the suspect has been identified in the brutal murder of a camper near Big Sky. 35-year-old Dustin Kajurzum was killed in his tent in the Moose Creek area back on October 12th, with the autopsy revealing multiple chop wounds, including to his skull. Not a lot of information is being released about the suspect. Gallatin County Sheriff Dan Springer says the person is currently in custody on unrelated charges and is cooperating, even leading investigators to previously identified evidence. He also says he's believed to have acted alone and there is no longer any threat to the community. A name has not been released. 
Some more good news from the Elk Fire tonight as four main roads are now open. Smith Creek Road, Twin Creek Road, Amsden Road, and Little Goose Canyon Road now all open to traffic again. Red Grade Road on the east side of the Bighorn National Forest will reopen Saturday. That fire, which has burned nearly 100,000 acres across Sheridan County, Wyoming, is now more than 80% contained. Nearly 200 firefighters continue to watch over the area, and Tongue River Road will remain closed as work continues in that area. Well, let's send it over to Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh now for a first look at the weather on this Wednesday night. Let's start with the Stockman Bank weather cam and talk about temperatures today. Cooler than average both in the morning and the afternoon. 27 degrees was the chilliest or 5 degrees below the seasonal average and we're a few degrees below the average by the afternoon but that sunshine did make it feel a little more comfortable. The winds very light. Top wind gust was 11 miles per hour. Statewide temperatures today uh, into the 40s and 50s. The gold shaded number shows you the average for this time of the year so we were pretty much in the ballpark where a typical day would be towards the end of October. October. We're going to see more days with similar temperatures coming up in the next several days and a chance of showers almost every other day. But I want to show you some changes next week that could trend warmer. Election Day is now less than one week away, and that will finally mean the end of those political ads that have bombarded the airwaves. You may have noticed me and other members of the Q2 team and some of them, something that has raised concern from some of our viewers. But in reality, TV stations have little to no control over these commercials and how clips of our newscast are used for political purposes. Tonight, our Charlie Kleps is taking a closer look. Nowadays, political ads are everywhere you look. They could be on your phone, on Facebook, or even on YouTube. And you might every now and then find that an MTN news member is on one of these ads, which could be confusing and might appear as an endorsement of that candidate. But that's not the case, and here's why. I'm John Tester, and I approve this message. Let me stop that right there before you change the channel. Don't worry, this isn't another political ad. It's in your face all the time, and it's exhausting. I see it every day, every day on the news, every day on social media. We get it. Everybody is sick of them. I'm so over them. Not only do I get the calls, I get the text messages. I, I'm seeing them on any TV shows. Just like harassment in a, in a sort of way. To make matters worse, these ads, which are seemingly played on a repeating loop, aren't always the most accurate. The claims made in those ads are often um, less accurate uh, the closer you get. PolitiFact correspondent Lewis Jacobson says that it isn't uncommon for claims to stray further further and further from the truth as Election Day approaches. It's a question of shading the truth, uh, sort of bending the truth a little bit. And if that wasn't confusing More enough... questions about the injury she claims to have received... Well, there's a familiar face, but why is Russ Riesinger in an ad for John Tester? As long as you don't steal you know, an entire newscast or something like that. It's not a problem for like anybody to use that. It's because of the fair use doctrine, meaning clips of newscasts are free to use because they're public information and news stations like KTVQ don't even have to be consulted. Sometimes it makes me think that the whole news station in general supports that candidate. The problem is clips often don't provide full context and can make it seem like a journalist is supporting one party or candidate. They're just trying to get the opinion across for everyone, no matter if you guys believe it or not. It may seem like that anchor is, uh, you know, endorsing that candidate. It's not the case. Just another confusing element during an election year. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Senator Steve Daines says regardless of how well Republicans do in their bid to take back control of the U.S. Senate, he won't be running for party leader. Daines told the news website Semaphore he would made a firm decision not to seek the position left open by retiring leader Mitch McConnell. He said he wants to spend more time with his family and in Montana. After two years leading the nationwide Republican campaign to win back a Senate majority, Daines has become a close ally of former President Donald Trump. National reports said Trump had encouraged him to run for Senate leadership. Daines will be up for re-election here in Montana in 2026. 
Well, Montana's U.S. Senate race is garnering the headlines this cycle. There are also many legislative seats up for grabs, both in the House and Senate. And right now, one question floating around is, will the Democrats pick up more seats this year than the supermajority held by Republicans? According to both parties, that is more likely this year. The reason involves new redistricting lines drawn for this election by an independent commission, something that is done every 10 years based on the census. In Yellowstone County, there are currently 20 House and Senate Republicans with just four Democrats. That could change based on the new map. Redistricting has been a point of contention for each party. And disenfranchising those conservative voters that have been in a district and now they'll end up with a uh, legislature that doesn't represent their needs. We've suffered through their gerrymandering, but I think it's ridiculous because no matter which way the, the maps were drawn up, it was gonna be a long, hard fought battle for Democrats to pick up any seats. Montana Republican Party Chairman Don Kelchmidt calls Yellowstone County the most important county when it comes to this year's legislative races. Just ahead of the busy holiday travel season, there's a new rule in place for airlines in the U.S. They will now be required to automatically refund passengers for significantly delayed or canceled flights. Some airlines were giving out vouchers previously, but the new federal rule requires automatic cash refunds instead. So what counts as a significantly delayed flight? Well, one that's three hours late flying domestically or six hours late flying internationally. The rule also requires airlines to refund passengers who pay for services that are not provided, like Wi-Fi or entertainment, and calls for reimbursements for bags that are lost or not delivered within 12 hours of a flight's arrival. More than 12 tons of prescription drugs are now off of the streets and out of homes thanks to the Drug Enforcement Administration's Drug Take Back Day. The 27th semi-annual event was held this past Saturday with the Rocky Mountain Field Division collecting more than 24,000 pounds of prescription medications throughout their four-state division. Colorado saw the most drugs returned with more than 11,000 pounds. Montana had nearly 1,500 pounds collected. The DEA says getting these items out of homes can be an important step in preventing potential misuse. The National Take Back event takes place on the final Saturdays in October and April. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, blazing her own trail. A young Wyoming woman opens up a new foundry while remembering an old one. We'll share her story next. And a Billings man proving that age is just a number completing a marathon in every state of the union at the age of 74. Scott will try to keep pace with him just a bit.